Hey YouTube, it's Manny. So, like you saw in my last short, we are upgrading the, uh, the gaming rig, uh, but there's been one small change. Originally I was going with the Gigabyte uh, Aero G motherboard. I have since switched. I actually installed everything, got it all up and running, and I could not get the external expansion slot working with my riser cable. I don't know what was going on. I ran out of patience and ran out of desire to actually trying to get it to work, right? I wish I could have gotten it to work for you guys, but I didn't. So instead, we upgraded. We are going with the Asus Public Gaming Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi Motherboard. All right, my boy Ems was the one. He uh, He's using this, uh, and I believe he has a riser cable on his as well. So one of the reasons I went with this, I know it's going to work. So we're going with it. So um, we will do an unboxing of this. We'll go over the motherboard, how to actually set things up properly uh, in case you're just a plug and play guy, you run in and throw everything in. We'll explain why we're plugging like the M.2 in a certain drive uh, slot and the memory and stuff like that. We'll go over that stuff, the back plane and uh, a few other things. We'll just look at it. Uh, it's not going to be too in-depth, but we'll talk about things as we install. All right, guys, let's get to the video. All right, boys, here is the box. Um, like most mo motherboards, this is very, very sturdy, uh, very strong. So let's first uh, open it up. Don't make it easy. There we go. Make sure everything is in frame, and there you have it. All right, so first thing we see, obviously, is the motherboard. When we open it up, on the side here is There's some stuff in here. Let's see what's in here. A cable, a single cable. That's all that's in that one thing is a single cable. Uh, this is this is your Wi-Fi antenna. So that's actually packed on top. Imagine the rest of the stuff's underneath. Uh, then we have the actual motherboard here. We'll open this up in a second to take a, take a look at it. We'll put that to the side for now. And I imagine under here is gonna be the rest of the stuff. All right, so looks like a keychain. Just a card, thank you, welcome card. Uh, what else we got in here? Stickers. Yes, the actual motherboard. I know the um, the Gigabyte did not give me an actual motherboard. You had to download it. It's actually nice to have a physical motherboard. I like it. And then, oh, a whole bunch of stuff under here. All right, so we got... I don't know if those... That could be like a, um, thermal pads. I don't know actually what that is. It's possibly thermal pads. Uh, same thing here. This is, it looks like an M.2 clip. I don't know if you guys can see it. They give you a ton of stuff in this thing. Yeah, another clip. Maybe they break easy. I don't know, it's an M.2 clip. We have to put them on. That's thermal, That's definitely a thermal pad. Uh, zip ties. Two SATA cables. This is a bracket of some sort. We'll have to look to see what everything, oh, this is a uh, fan bracket for, it's a fan holder for something. VRM, maybe. I think that's what it is. Then we have another bracket in here. This is, they have pictures on the back of the bracket, so uh, this is for, this is also for a fan, I think, as well. So this goes near the um, memory up near the top. So I'm not 100% sure exactly which one this is, but it's another bracket. And then this is. Graphics card holder. Also, if you have a really oh, so it's um that's nice. I'm not going to need it because we're going to vertically mount ours uh, and use a riser cable. So this is to um, support the graphics card uh, on a if you horizontally mount it. And then this is a pin of some sort. I'm not sure where it goes, but figure out if you need it. So that's everything there. Let me get the motherboard back out here. We'll look, take a closer look at it. All right, here is the board. Is the overview of the board? We'll look at a few things uh, real quickly. Uh, nothing, you know huge dramatic so obviously it is uh lga uh 1700 series so we're putting a 13 gen cpu in here uh we have the um ddr5 um dim slots so we're going to put slots two and four basically uh a2 and b2 we're going to use those two those are the recommended ones tip most most motherboards have some sort of feature like that where you're supposed to put it in certain slots slots for uh first uh if you have four slots just put them in all make sure they match now um this does have um uh, pcie Gen 5, it has a, a X16 uh, lanes, and it also has a PCIe uh, M.2 uh, with a Gen 5. So the interesting thing is, if you put a uh, if you put your graphics card in here, 
uh, and you put a, uh, an M.2 in this slot, you will only get eight lanes on this. So it's important, unless you're using a Gen 5 and you want to have a uh, Gen 5 NVMe and a Gen 5 graphics card, do not put your NVMe, NVMe, <laughs> NVMe, uh, NVMe into the first slot here skip this slot, right? There is another CPU slot for the uh, M.2, and that is slot two, which happens to be down here. Well, when I um, when I actually start installing stuff, you'll see it. You want to use this slot. So you get 16 lanes here for your, say, like right now, there are no real uh, Gen 5, um, I'm sorry, PCIe 5.0 graphics cards. So you're going to put your graphics card in here, get the 16 lanes. These are also actually, you could use either one of these too, because these are also 16 lanes as well. These are uh, 4.0 PCIe. 4.0, um, 16 lanes. So you can use either one of these. I'm going to use this. I'm not going to use this because I don't have any 5.0 stuff anyway. So what I'm going to do is graphics card is going to go in here, riser cable, and then we're going to install uh, our uh, M.2 here, which is slot 2, but this is also uh, by the um, PCIe. Then you have four other uh, spots for M.2s, and those are all off the chipset. So they're a little slower, but not a big deal. All right, now uh, let's look at a couple other things. There is an interesting little switch down here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to switch it to yet. So uh, this switch is uh, alternating. Let's see if I can get in focus. Alternating PCIe um, switch. So it's set to um, auto right now, which is default. It doesn't explain what default really is. Um, but if I switch it over one, it'll set the PCIe lanes to gen, uh, to 4.0 and switch it over two, it's 3.0. I'm gonna leave it as auto right now, see if that works fine. If it doesn't, we'll go to 4.0 because everything I have is 4.0. Um, we have a couple addressable uh, addresses down here, two, two addressable RGBs down here, which is nice, um, you know, USBs. Let's switch up over here. Now, one thing I do kind of like on this is you have this Q, uh, Q code thing. So this will tell you any error codes and above it are the normal little LEDs. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but they'll just light up normal ones, the four normal ones you get. So that's that. Um, and then let's look at the back plane. All right, now a really cool thing about this board, which I really like is there are 12 USB ports on the back of it. Uh, seven of them are, um, USB 3 uh, Gen 2s, so you go into the red ones. Then I got four uh, Gen 1s, and then we got uh, two USB Cs in here, which are really cool. Obviously, the audio, uh, Wi Fi antennas, you've got an optical uh, for the audio. Then, if your chipset supports it, which if you have this, you probably do have chipset that supports it, um, unless you get what? The F series which doesn't have the integrated graphics card. So uh, you have a display port and an HMI port, which obviously aren't gonna be used if you don't. Um, what else we got? Clear CMOS back here to uh, do it. You can BIOS flash as well. Um, those are all useful things. I always worry like, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you have to, I didn't read it, but I'm guessing you have to hold it down because I'd hate to be able to come back here, bump it and flash my, um, reset my uh, CMOS. Um, the other thing which, I noticed too is in here we have a start button. So I guess if you're running this on an open rig and you are just testing the motherboard, you can turn it on and off here. Well, this will start it and this will also um, put it to sleep or whatever they said. So it's a start button where you don't actually have to have it plugged into a case. You can just have it on a um, test bed. All right, guys, that's it. Let us get this, uh, let's get started installing things. All right, first thing we're gonna install is the CPU. Now, interesting enough, uh, I was actually recommended to get a Thermal right Intel um, anti-bending buckle uh, pressure plate for this, which will replace the actual bracket that's here. Um, I'm not gonna do it today, I will do it later on. Uh, it was recommended because it will actually help with thermals. And one thing, I'm not gonna overclock this, so I don't need to worry about thermals too much, but I'm the room I'm in, I don't, I'm not air conditioned, and in the summertime, it does get very hot. So uh, I'll do another video once that comes in. It should come in tomorrow, but I'll probably have this all set up, and I'll have to take it back down and set it all up. But for now, we're just gonna um, change out this. All right, for the memory, as I discussed earlier, I'm only gonna be putting two sticks in for 32 megabytes, uh, gigabytes, sorry. Um, and we're gonna use slot A2 and B2, which are the second and fourth slot. So with the ASUS, I believe it only clicks over this side. And then we're gonna take our sticks, slides in like this, I believe I'm getting it the right way. Yeah. I've clicked in, 
and then slot B2. That's it. There's our memory. All right, now for the NVMe uh, drive. As I discussed earlier, we do not want to use the top one because this is going to share uh, the lanes with the, the PCI Express for our graphics card. So we're going to skip this one. The next CPU uh, one is M.2 is down here. And like I said, you have the uh, other four which are part of the chipset. So we're going to take this one off and we're going to install it here. That's for this motherboard. Obviously, every motherboard is slightly different. Um, so just make sure you install it in the right slot for your motherboard. Check your manuals. Always check your manuals, guys. Um, I can't stress that enough. Even though you're an experienced uh, person and you know what you're doing, every motherboard might be slightly different, so make sure you do that. Uh, so this is slot two down here. I take our... Plug this in here. So this, this is a... Uh, simply just push it over. So it's a quick release slot. Also, uh, underneath here, so I'm going to put it back on like this, so make sure we take this uh, cover off the thermal pad. We'll leave the other ones on. I don't want to take the thermal pad off. But I guess that's why they gave you extra thermal pads in the motherboard packaging. All right, so this is going to go like right about here. Oh, it's stuck already. Make sure I get this lined up properly before we stick it in. That's actually in there. That one should be lined up as well. All right, that's almost everything. Um, there is, there are a whole bunch of these little things I want to pull off this. Make sure you get all this stuff off before you. Uh, put it together so start ripping all this stuff off as well all right next thing we're going to do is we got to actually put the uh, bracket on for the the back bracket uh for the heat sink yeah the z73 uh we'll do that next all right there we go uh we have our cpu in our memory in we have our nvme in and we have our back bracket uh in we're ready to install this obviously i'm not gonna put thermal paste on yet until we're ready to install it because we get hair and whatever else stuck to it so uh We'll set up all that. First, I gotta take the old one out. Uh, I gotta run a new cable that we're gonna do too. So, a few minutes, and we'll get right back to it. All right, guys, so I got the computer off the wall. I ran the new cable, which we're good now. Um, I got the back plate off. We're gonna take the old motherboard out, put the new one in. All right, here we go. There you go. Motherboard's switched over. Uh, I had to run some cables. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, I'm probably just going to push it back against the wall a little bit here. I'm not going to mount it yet. Make sure everything works before I mount it. Um, plug it in. We'll go from there. So let me uh, push it back against the wall, plug it in. I still have to put the back plate on and then mount it, obviously, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's just see if it works. Uh, it does have Windows already installed on the uh, M.2, so we should be good to go there. All right, everything's plugged in and ready to go. We're just going to hit the power button. See you fire up. Now, as I said before, I do have Windows already installed on the drive. A couple things, I obviously put the graphics card in. Um, the graphics card is a, I plugged it into, I didn't plug it into the 5.0 because um, I'm not sure about the BIOS and stuff. I want to make sure that it works. So I did plug it in a uh, 4.0, one of the uh, 4.0 X16s, which is fine. It'll, it'll run fine on that. It doesn't need to be in the 5 slot. So it's like everything's booting up. And we can turn around and we see Windows has started up. There we go. Everything's working fine. All right, guys. Let's get it back on the wall. All right, guys, here it is up on the wall. I'll, uh, cables neatened up the best I can do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're plugged into the uh, PCIe 4.0 uh, 16X, the first port for the graphics card. Now, since it's all set up, let's go look real quickly uh, to finish this video, and we'll show you some uh, performance metrics for the old motherboard compared to the new one. All right, guys, here's a real quick... Uh, Performance test, this is Time Spy Extreme. This is on 3D Mark. This is their 4K DirectX uh, performance uh, test. So as you can see on the left-hand side is the old AMD 3900X with a Gigabyte Ultra, uh, Horus Ultra X570, has DDR4 3600. And on the right, you have the new Intel 13900K with an Asus ROG Strix Z790E DDR5 7200. Now you can clearly see that the uh, Intel one did much better, but 
Remember, we also have, there's a few things you gotta take in account. The Asus board is a lot better than the Gigabyte board was. Uh, it's a lot, it's more high end. It's not the most high end, but it's more high end. And also memory's running at twice, is twice as fast, not also including the uh, processor. So take it with a grain of salt and you can see the CPU scores, the Intel is well over double that of the AMD one, which we did kind of expect something. And if you look at our scores, you get 8,402 for the AMD and you get uh, 10, 112 for um, the Intel. So clearly see there is a marked improvement in performance with the Intel process. So very happy with that. I would hate to see the same score. So, you know, that's how it is. All right, guys, that's all I'm gonna do for um, benchmarking for this. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button below and leave any comments if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please smash the subscribe button. You can also hit me up when I'm live over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash maniarchity, where I stream Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evening, starting at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'd be happy to answer any questions live on stream. Till next time, YouTube, take it easy.